right now. Okay. All right. Well, thank you everybody for coming today for our Lunch and Learn series. Um, my name is Amber Schultz. I'm the Wildlife Education Program Manager of the Fish and Wildlife Education Division here at Nebraska Gibbon Parks. And I'm really excited today that we are going to have um, two very knowledgeable <laughs> and engaging speakers on this, on this topic of creating an engaging virtual program, which a lot of us had to learn very quickly last year and then um, relearn and adapt. And now we're like, we are just chatting. We, um, you know, we find ourselves in a position where we're moving back to in-person programs, but yet that demand might still be there. And we found some pros and cons to uh, what virtual education and programs allowed us to do in ways that maybe we didn't even know before. So um, I was thinking about this topic and I know from the feedback that I got from a lot of participants from the series so far, Many of you actually had said, you know, when I when I posed the question, what topics would you like to learn more about? Many of you actually did say, I want to know more about engaging virtual programs. Um, so I know it might seem silly now to do it in July as we're moving to in person. But like I said, we have all found we've had a lot of discussions here in the education division and I think maybe even around the agency of, you know, how important they are and that it's still a need for it. And so um, and there's some really cool tricks and tools that a lot of us had uh, just been thrown in the deep end and had to learn along the way. And so I'm, I was excited to reach out to two people that I know have been really rocking it in the last year and to kind of get pick their brains and um, allow them to share with us the knowledge that they've learned about how to do this in an effective way. So, um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Before I introduce our speakers, just a little, um, a little heads up, the next six months of this series and some of the topics that are coming up. Um, so today is our creating an engaging virtual program. And then the next one is going to be engaging our audience through social media. And this one should be a really great one too. I know a lot of us um, are somehow in the realm of social media, you know, with education and some of our pages and some of the pages at our parks and things like that. And there's really a, there's a science and a practice behind how to continue to do outreach, but on that platform. So I'm excited to learn um, from Kristen Carter and Monica McCubrey on that one. In September, we're doing Understanding and Communicating Climate Change 101. This should be a really great one um, to learn more about. And it's actually the, the, our, the speaker there is gonna be Dr. Harwood. He's a UNL um, climate scientist. And so I'm really excited to learn from him. He's a really fantastic science communicator and he has a um, really good way of, of communicating about things like this. So that should be a great one. Community Science 101 is in October and that's with Allie Mays. She's our Community Science Coordinator. And this is gonna be another really great one to get plugged into what's happening at the agency, what's happening across Nebraska, what is community science and how we can use it as a tool for engagement and conservation. Um, storytelling in science will be in November and that's with myself and Grace Gard, our, our aquatic education specialist here. And this is going to be a really great one. How do we bring science to people in a new and, and different way um, through storytelling? Or how do we think like, how do we think about the idea of story when we're educating and, and communicating about, you know, our, our management, our science, and things like that. And then the last one of the year is going to be the education strategic plan, results and successes. And Lindsay Rogers will be um, the speaker for that. And that'll be really great to look at this amazing uh, cross-division effort in our education working group and all of the things that they have worked on, looking at that strategic plan they put forward for the agency, kind of where we came from and where we're going. So that should be great too. So anyways, that's kind of a big picture synopsis of what's coming up in this series. And again, it's um, the second Wednesday of every month. Um, the idea of this is that we are learning from each other. We're learning across divisions. Uh, it's relatable and transferable knowledge, no matter what role we play. And I'm always interested in, in learn in getting feedback from anyone. How can we make this more useful, uh, more helpful to you? Because that's the point is to make it relevant to all of us here so we can continue on our mission. So I will send out evaluations after the presentation. So that being said, I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm going to allow, I'm going to introduce, so Julia Plug is going to be presenting today and also Jamie Bachman. And I'm really excited to hear and learn from them of what they have learned over the last year of how to create an engaging virtual program. Julia and Jamie, I will uh, just give it to you. You can um, introduce yourself more and then get started. 
And then they're going to pre uh, present for a little bit. We're going to have some time at the end for more questions and discussions, especially I want to keep in mind if any of you participating today have um, participated in virtual programs or coordinated any, we'd really love to hear from you too. Like, what did you find helpful? What have you learned? Are there any challenges that you face? What questions do you have? And just really facilitate that discussion of that learning from each other, especially in this round. Because I know we've all been kind of wrapping our brains around this last year or so. So anyways, thank you so much for joining us today. And Jamie and Julia, thank you. And um, you can take it from here. Julia, do you want to share? Because you're the, you're the first part. Gotcha. I have to play with this real quick. Yes, I will share. And so what we're, what we're going to do here today for this real, um, I'm Jamie Bachman. I am a, a wildlife educator with Northern Prairies Land Trust and uh, Game and Parks Commission. And I'm going to do like, um, I'm going to cover a couple of things and um, here at the end um, of our uh, presentation uh, after Julia and Julia uh, can introduce yourself and um, I will I will jump on and incoherently babble the last half of this presentation <laughs> we have friends. Jamie and I are great at that. So uh, yeah, very excited to talk about you know how we've created engaging virtual programs like uh, Amber stated, we were kind of baptized by fire, honestly, last March, uh, as we are moving into our crazy spring season uh, with outdoor discovery programs, our school programs, we had to quickly figure out a way to continue to engage, continue to educate. And how were we going to do this? You know, all these programs, we're so used to being there in person. We're used to doing hands-on uh, skills, hands-on activities. How are we going to capture our audience and perhaps uh, create a, a new audience that is out there looking for something to do? And so Jamie and I are going to just present back and forth some ways that what we've been doing, uh, maybe some things that we've either participated ourselves as a student or uh, as, as we present this, I was also thinking about, okay, what are not just ways of the classroom, but of ways of being a staff member, like in a meeting and wanting to learn uh, things that as a staff member, what can you do in meetings or what can you teach in um, just a public meeting for say, so that's just kind of different ways that I've also included in this. Uh, one, the program that we have here that I'm presenting on is actually Google Slides. And so it is in Google program, which is really great because Jamie and I were able to add and edit it through Google and it wasn't just the PowerPoint on our computer. And so that's always ways of collaborations. You know, Jamie's right now, she's at home or even if she was in the Norfolk office, we could still work and design this together. And so, we'll get, you know, it's just all these little pieces that will make things more efficient for you. And so, you know, why were we doing all things? So we had to keep, keep in mind before we were starting or before you even start a virtual program or a virtual meeting is, you know, present your best online. You know, just because you're staring at, I know staring at a computer is hard. We're getting used to it now that what, whatever, we're up to almost two years now of this. Um, but yet still want to, at least if you're having, have that nice shirt on. I mean, Jamie and I combed our hair today. So give it up for that. Yep. Yep. We combed our hair today. Yesterday I didn't uh, because I didn't, I didn't have to present. Use technology to your advantage and so we have it, let's use it. We're, today we're using Zoom, we're using that as at our advantage. We're using Google Slides to our advantage and so that you can see that and easy to use. While we have been in this now for two years, pushing this virtual thing, if we don't continue to move with the strides of technology, we don't wanna get behind when the rest of the world is needing to improve. Keep it interactive. So you're going to see we're going to do some interactive activities with you. Like I said, you know, especially with our outdoor skills participation with Jamie always going into the classrooms and teaching those like 
the kids were getting dirty or they were doing the CSI activities where our uh, participants through BOW were, you know, they were shooting, they were doing archery. Uh, they were going on hikes. Now, how can we keep them interactive and doing these things when they're now sitting on the couch learning from us? Uh, make the audience feel valued so that, you know, like uh, Amber's going to do at the end, ask questions at any point in time. If you guys have questions, that's why we have the chat box uh, or just holler out, you know, just start speaking over us. Uh, Jamie and I would speak over you, so speak over us. We don't care. And then make the information digestible. So we got some techniques. You know, our information, a lot of times it's easier to explain when it's hand, hand um, when it's in our hands, or we have some intense information sometimes through science. We got to present in a way, just not on slides, make it easy to understand. And then be patient. Honestly, you know, we, we learned this in the beginning for sure. And even our Becoming an Outdoor Woman program and what uh, we did our She Goes Outdoors uh, program where we were sending women uh, subscription boxes. And in those subscription boxes were, uh, let's say the fishing one, it was fishing gear. Okay, so we're trying to teach these women how to use the fishing gear on top of how to use zoom all in one 50 minute program and so you learn definitely have to be patient with your audience or your students or they're going to get frustrated a not want to listen to you more b lose interest in the program and c not want to do the activity if that makes sense so i uh, so one thing that some of you may be using now you maybe you've used it for meetings I have seen it more and more used for uh, educational programs as a way of getting collaboration. Uh, Jamboard is kind of like a marker board of ideas or like um, a notebook that everybody's sharing the ideas. Uh, it's engaging. It can be easy to use. Uh, you can share it. So that's what I'm going to do today is you can access permission to whoever can use it and you can add it on. And then as we add ideas to this Jamboard, then we'll see each other's ideas. Uh, and then it, what's the great thing about it is our content that we're gonna put on this is going to, it saves. And then you don't have to lose that piece of paper because I'm just as guilty. Like we all make those sticky notepads up on the board, up on the wall or notebook, and then, well, yeah, we lose it. So here's an example. Can you see the Jamboard? Yep, see Kayla's face. I see that, I think she was on here. She's probably like, I'm very excited to see her face right now. So one example is if you're doing an education, uh, like maybe perhaps a training with volunteer fishing instructors, or if we're doing a training or educational program with our train stock instructors, you can have them collaborate with uh, types of programs like using Jamboard. You know, for example, when we were, and maybe we've all been in programs like this where the presenter's teaching and maybe there's just a couple participating willing to speak up. Jamboard's a great way to include everyone because you will get people that will only want to speak and the rest of them, you know, they're going to lay back, they're going to have their camera off, but they're willing to maybe type something but they're not willing to just like pop their face on the screen and talk to the computer. Believe it or not, it took me a while to even talk to the computer. So what we're gonna do is I just want to just a quick little activity for us here. Like I said, uh, make things engaging. And when you hit this sticky note right here, um, if you hit the sticky note and everybody, oh, I gotta share that link. That would help a lot. So in the uh, Jamie, are you able to post pop it that? in the chat? Are you going to pop it in the chat box? I'm trying, but for some reason now, since I have this screen up as my, um, it won't let me. Oh, there it is. Never mind. Hello. 
And that, that's kind of something that happens when we're yeah. trying to do this technology stuff. You're like, oh, I just got to uh, figure out. <laughs> be place. Yeah, be patient. Be patient, right? Okay, so everyone should be able to click that link and that will give you, send you to that jam box. Hey, I can see everyone popping up on there. Look, the zoo is popping up at the top of the jam box. So now that we have everyone popping in there, what you can do is you grab at the corners this sticky note and it'll pop up. And what I want you to do is what fishing techniques would you share with a new angler wanting to catch largemouth bass? So, you know, if you are an instructor or you're the expert of largemouth bass, uh, you would put some techniques in there. Maybe you would put in there uh, what kind of bait to use, uh, what type of habitat. Uh, if you don't know or if that person doesn't know, then put uh, what kind of snacks you would take that you feel would be the best. So like an example here is, yeah, try gummy bears. There you go. Uh, cool day. Fish on a cool day is what I'm going to type. And it saves it. It pops it up. And then whoever's leading the meeting can just either you can categorize it you can move things around. You can uh, you can look for maybe you can ask, say, hey, who you know of the audience who put worms, lots of worms, and you could say, okay, get, you know, provide me some more information. Or uh, the person that put play in water, look for macroinvertebrates. But you could say, hey, whoever put macroinvertebrates, tell us more. What is a macroinvertebrate? And that is the way, just a simple way of engaging. By the way, this is a free program. Um, it's through Google. Schools are used to using it anymore. Um, I'm using it more and more. And I know the extension and university world is using it because it's free. It's easy to use. And like I said, again, this page saves and I always have, I will have it on mine and then I can share it with all of you. And now that you have the link to share, you can get in there and you can add information later on. And Julia, can't you save yep. it as like a PDF or even yep. like yep. an image yep. or JPEG? Very cool. Yes. Yeah. You can download it as a PDF and, and send it that way. Yeah. You could have it like in a report or something or some, exactly. Know, something. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, or if you're creating workshops or you could create a uh, worksheet together for people to share. Yeah, exactly. I won't do it just for the lack of uh, save of time, but um, you know, another idea is you could do competitions for people like we can split up team A and team B. And so using like the sticky note function, how many Nebraska native mammals can you list in one minute? Like we could do a one minute and then I could split this group into two and then we could have a competition or a game. So that's another example. I am going to go back. I'm going to stop sharing that and uh, I will go to Jamie, you have anything to add to that? Um, uh, at the top, uh, there are arrows, so you can add um, new sheets. You kind of showed that. You can also um, insert uh, images. Um, yes. Yep. And I, I had a different, uh, I've done it where in Zoom we have breakout groups and each, each, um, each team within the same, each breakout group within the same Jamboard has their own piece of paper basically, and they're all collaborating together from different places on, you know, so it's a really cool way to interact in, in breakout rooms on Zoom too, to collaborate and, and collect ideas. There's lots of different ways that you can use it. You just kind of have to figure out, you know, how to make it all kind of fit together. I'm going to, and I'm going to add as well, this is actually something that uh, we used in, recently in a meeting where we were engaging with outside partners and we were asking them some questions that um, I don't want to say we're sensitive, but like we want, we really wanted their honest feedback without being worried of sharing honest feedback. And this was almost like even better than being in person in, in a way because we were able to put that out there and then they could add or they could even add later. But we got some really, really uh, interesting and exciting and useful answers and feedback from these partners. I feel because it was 
it felt more, um, yeah, remove, Aaron Johnson just said remove barriers, right? It, uh, it kind of took away some of that maybe um, anxiety of, of being honest in, in some of the questions. So I thought this was, this was a really cool tool to use. We do have a question on the Jamboard that says users have a bunch of power to mess with the page and are there fixed locks that can limit that? I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I think, I think the point is, is it with, I mean, I would probably use a different platform or you could use annotation in Zoom um, and keep it and I'll kind of go over that here in a little bit, but I don't know if there's a fix lock on it. I think the point is, is that everybody can mess with the page. You might need to use a different platform if you don't want participants to interact with it, probably. Yeah. Well, and the link that I gave you is ed ed edible. So it's not edible as in you can eat, but you can edit it. Um, you can control it as far as who can edit. So if I wanted to only give the link to five of you, I can do that. Whoever has that specific link that I showed is the ones that can edit. So if, if you want half the group for some reason, this one committee to edit and you want another part of the group to only be able to see it, then you can um, adjust that so that that's the nice way to be able to protect it um it is what it is sometimes you just have to have faith and trust in your your students or your team okay i'm going to go back to um editing or uh, sharing that and pull that up I'm just gonna, knowing that next next month or August, I think, uh, is your presentation more on social media. I'm not gonna touch a whole lot on this, but I just wanted to just um, talk a little bit of what we did for like, especially becoming an outdoor woman. Uh, we have, you know, the agency has several pages or groups that people follow ritually like that is the group that they they will go to the group i uh, like the fish and uh you got you know your division may have something a page that people really follow go to there for specific information the same with the become an outdoor woman program or the she goes outdoors they're going to those pages for specific information so we knew we had a captured audience uh so we played a lot of with Facebook Live starting this spring, like we started a series. So every Saturday morning this winter, knowing that, you know, Saturday mornings in a winter is people are typically just kind of starting their day. They're not going and out and about like we do this time of year as much. So at 9 a.m. on Saturday mornings, we had a different topic talking about something. Uh, and then it was probably it was seasonal and then as we moved into the fall season then we we were seasonal as far as spring turkey so there's a lot of benefits to facebook live you know you're increasing your awareness so these people that are following our facebook want to participate but maybe haven't ever physically been able to participate in a program that is a way to spread spread some message. It was a quick like 30 minutes at the most. We're honestly, we're bam, we're live. We're right there on Facebook. We know we hover over Facebook. We know they do. They got it instantly. Cost savings. Uh, you know, we were doing this on a Saturday morning from our couch or from our front yard. Uh, we didn't have to have staff come in. We didn't have to travel across the state. And we were spreading the message to a larger audience. Uh, again, it cuts down time for that same reason. We're con we can connect to multiple pages. So like Aaron here is giving his information. Um, he was live on the BOW page, but it also connected to the agency's page. It connected to the outdoor education page and we were able to bring them all together. And then again, like I said, instant notification. So uh, I can say, hey, I'm really interested in this Facebook live event that's coming up. Um, I click that I'm going and then it'll pop up that I'm that um, and it'll remind me because let's face it, we all need reminders. I needed a reminder five minutes ago that I was supposed to be presenting on this and like, ah, okay, so that's, that's just the way it, it, it happens. Uh, I know Jamie and Amber, your team, you guys were doing Facebook lives. You were doing, you're posting YouTubes on Facebook. It's, it's a, it's an amazing platform that we've relied on 
so much. And I think that's why you're spending an entire uh, lunch and learn on it. Julia, what has been your feedback with that specifically? I'm curious about that. Have you had a lot, of, have you seen a lot of engagement when you did yeah, that? Yeah, so every video has some type of like 500 to up to even a thousand views on it. Wow. Yeah, um, but you know, some of that's just if you hover over it for a minute or two, mm. it, it well, still, yeah. it shows you watched. But a lot of, there'd be a lot of participation on it initially, but what people really liked was that it's in their newsfeed and they mm -hmm. can go back and watch it when Mm -hmm. their schedule allowed mm -hmm. you know as a busy mom I could watch it at 10 30 at night when I finally had the chance to watch it mm -hmm. or if people were working on Saturday morning they could go watch it and I think that's what they really liked then you know they're as they can still ask us questions in that message news feed uh and then they we could, our team would go back and respond to them constantly so that is the great part of it the negative part of it is when you're right on facebook live the way the video works out is we are not able to move it over to youtube as easy so that it saves in the youtube world that's the negative the part of it uh, there's features that zoom and facebook connect but it just wasn't working the best i foresee in the future that it the kinks will be ironed out and it'll work if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I get not everybody has the access to jump on a Facebook Live page, but you know, our team, if you have a message to share or information to do, then you know, reach out to those of us that do uh, admin a page and we can help with that information. Is this yours, Jamie? Okay, go for it. Go ahead and stop sharing. So I okay. can, is that cool? Yep, there you go. Anybody, uh, I guess maybe we'll, we'll wrap, we'll, we'll do questions for all of us at the end or something. Does that sound good? Um, let me figure out my life here for just a second. So I know what's going on, uh, this thing. So when we were like uh, trying to figure out where we're at and what's going on, a lot of the times we just talk to ourselves. It's just super great, you know? Okay. But so Jamie, I, I think that, that um, something that we miss about in-person programs is the, the humanness of it, you know, that social connection. Yeah. And yeah. so I really appreciate you talking to yourself and I really appreciate your presentation style because it's, it feels human, which is where okay. I'd, I'd like to be, so. It's all, it's all it's I great. can do. Yep. Um, can you see insert your own clever side title here, friends? Okay. <clears throat> so first things first, um, I just think that if, 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 if I'm sure we all did this, we all, like Julia said, we were baptized by fire. Uh, we should all be really proud as individuals and as a team and a part of this agency, how we adapted and, and moved through, um, like, it was amazing what, what we all did. It was un unbelievable the things that we needed to learn um, and, and at the quick pace that we had to learn. And I think we should all be proud of that. Am amazing. So many people did so many amazing things. I just just blew, my, blew me away on, on what we had to do and how we adapted. And I think that as an agency, it is a division or I just think that we should be really proud of that. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple uh, of platforms. I'm going to show you a few things in Zoom real quick, just to make sure that it just isn't like, oh, these are some problems that I had, or this is just, I know Zoom, oh God, but, um, and then I'm going to go cover a couple of interactive platforms. Um, the way that I I stumbled into these platforms is because, you know, everyone was like hosting uh, for, uh, present, you know, zoom presentations on like how to interact virtually with an audience so that like right when COVID hit and we were all like oh my god what to do we were all like what i was just went to every every presentation i could and and just you know scribbled down notes and then then i went online um on youtube and and then um learned about the so i could i got i heard from the conferences or the presentations like all the different platforms and then i went on youtube and watched like how to tutorials and that's kind of like how i figured out what was available and then like how to do things, how to do it. 
Um, and all of these are interactive with, um, so, uh, with, so that I'm presenting, but you as the audience can um, interact with the, the screen and the way that or interact with the presentation and the way that the two platforms are the first platform that I'm going to go through. Um, I'll explain that later. I'm jumping ahead. Slow down, Jamie. Um, so um, a couple of things you need to know about these interactive platforms and the way that I use them and you'll see because I you'll see um, is um, you don't really know how much time um, it's going to take to present until you like do it a couple of a couple of times and and, and then understand so um, be uh, patient with yourself um, uh, about oh I didn't get to cover that or um, or I, I had too much or I had too little. So be patient with yourself on that because it just it's hard. It's hard to gauge um, when you're using these different kinds of interactive platforms and also um, your audience sometimes, especially if you're interact if it's interactive. Sometimes your audience is isn't going to be up to speed on how to like like okay close your zoom window and open up a new tab like that's like a barrier that we need to learn how we like I had to learn how to communicate and, and understand. And some of these platforms also don't work well on, on phones. So if people are, you know, some, a lot of people don't have like devices laptops are only devices of phones. So if they're zooming in from a phone they're not going to be able to do the interactive part of it. So just some things to keep in mind. Um, okay, so Zoom and OGs, just because we're all just kind of probably a little like go go about about it. Um, so um, I'm just going to show you my pro my my I just want to go through. And I was hey, Jamie, I was gonna say while you're looking at that or looking for that. I was going to say that, you know, Many of you that may be listening have participated or heard of the outdoor discovery programs before. We went from a thousand kids a day being in person at the state parks to fully transforming them to participate in the event on Zoom. Uh, so all these presenters that did that did an absolutely amazing job. It was just rather it was the coordinating effort of where that activity is going to physically be and what's their lunch. My part was to like arrange the zoom link and get it to that teacher. It worked great. Like everyone was very thankful and that the they were thankful in the fact that we put the effort into continuing life as it was and that uh, they still got to learn. And so Zoom, while we despised Zoom, we despised Zoom when it started, we still may be frustrated with Zoom. I think it's the time we're going to continue to use it and the schools, that's, that's the new normal anymore. <coughs> if, I'm afraid that's I'm not afraid, but I think that's just the way it's going to be. And like I said, it, it worked out. So not always G's. <laughs> right. You know, thank you. I mean, yeah, I'm more, I'm like, I'm more like, you know, if, if anybody in the audience is like, I know we're going to talk about Zoom again. Um, and I, and, and I, I think Julie, you definitely need to take some credit and be proud of like how you organized your team to help make that all happen because wow and, and I just feel so proud we should all be super proud of ourselves. that was a, an incredible feat to pull off and I think it all went I don't know I just it's just, just a feel good situation it's all the feels okay, so, um I just want to cover a couple of things with zoom and some zoom zoom settings just you know we had a couple of of, of things happen um, with our presentations and I, um, let's see. So up in your Zoom account, you have your profile meetings. So this probably all looks normal and I apologize if I'm covering stuff you already know, but you know. Um, so I will go to settings and in settings, uh, you have this situation, right? Oh, hold on, something else you can do. Oh, I stopped sharing. That's not what I wanted to have happen. Let me just go back to what's happening um i really like to annotate and i will sh show you this look at my red can you all see my red spotter guy heck yeah so this um that is when you share your screen and you have a little drop down um menu 
you can see um, it's under um, annotate in its spotlight. Bam. Um, okay, Jamie, so, I didn't even know that. That's really cool. I had no idea. Thank you for teaching me that. Very cool. Um, cool. Awesome. Um, I would like for you, so just in meetings, under, um, settings, a couple, so you have your security, and this is all your basic require a passcode. See, Anne, Anne is annotating, and this is what happened during a presentation of Monica's uh, Science Of, right? And some kid was like, knew, knew, you know, knew how to do it. And in, 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 the, in basic meetings, settings in in meeting basics you can scroll down to um, annotate annotation and you can turn this is where you can turn that off um, because if you want to you know um, and I think maybe some of you are now just discovering the annotate like you can you can draw um, woo, or you can like like oh yay it's such a feel good. Um, now I have to clear it. Okay. Um, so I think that was a big one that I wanted to show you. Um, also, um, let me come back. Nope, I'm in annotate still spotlight. Okay. Um, let me go up here. And so at the very beginning, I got distracted with the annotation. Here you can set a waiting room. Um, this is where all your settings are for the security of, of your Zoom calls. Okay um uh requiring a password um all, all the stuff i'm not going to go through it i just kind of want you to know that this is where it is and that there's a way that you can turn things on and off like um a host video starts or participant video starts when um when the meeting starts um you can do i always keep mine on telephone and computer because sometimes people just call in and listen <clears throat> Um, as you go through to scheduling a meeting, um, you can mute all participants. You can turn on or off mute all and these settings will be set for your account. So anytime you make a meeting, anytime it starts, all the participants will be muted when they join the meeting, or you can turn that off if you want. Um, so there's all those kinds of settings, you know, chat settings, um, the annotation, this, uh, the meeting polls allows you to um, do polling in, in Zoom. So you can do some polls in Zoom. And if you ever needed to know how to do that, you can Google it. Or if you want me to help you, you can call me and I will, you know, stumble my way through it. Um, I think just, so, just know that this is here for you. I was gonna take you through some back breakout rooms, but I, I mean, if you, if you need to understand how to do breakout rooms, and um, in, in, because you want to do that in a Zoom meeting, you can you know, give me a call um, and I can, I can walk you through it. Not that I'm like an expert, but I've just like stumbled through it. Um, um, so I just wanted to basic, just some basic stuff like this in, in Zoom, in your Zoom, in, for your Zoom settings. Is this is where it is um, in your meetings or your settings. Your recordings here, you can, um, if you record things to the cloud or to your computer, and I do believe agency would prefer you to uh, record them on your computer and not in the cloud, because there's not a lot of, I do believe that that is kind of like the rule of thumb. That, and I've just learned it, it, it takes a long time to show up and all that information. Okay, very good. So you can search, you know, your, um, and they don't they won't stay here forever but you can search and um and find your recordings here um also you can go to reports and you can get your usage reports for um <clears throat> how many participants you you know how many participants you had um you know um for different different things that you different meetings that you had and you can download those reports and the minutes that they were on and, and all of those kinds of things. And I know I'm kind of just like quickly stumbling through all of this, but if you, um, you know, just to know that you have access to these things, if you didn't already, um, and then you can Google it or call me and ask. Um, okay, so that's Zoom. And we'll take, take questions at some point in time. I'm gonna, yeah, I was gonna ask, is, does yeah, anyone please. have any specific questions on, on Zoom? And, 
honestly, Jamie, I've been doing this for um, just as long as everyone else, and I just learned some things that I didn't see, that I didn't know on my own. So that's that's really cool. Um, does anyone have any thoughts or questions or challenges, even just specifically regarding Zoom, um, or uh, other exciting bonus tips that you have also discovered? I'd love to hear. Okay, that. and and in the chat, did you answer? Oh, you answered these questions in the chat. Okay, sorry, Amber. Okay. We, uh, we use Zoom when we're recording, when we talk about podcasts here in a minute, but we use Zoom just to record the podcast. It records and then I can move that into editing software to uh, resave it, edit it, and then we can repost it as an educational workshop for people to listen and watch. So uh, definitely can use it as a recording method too for yeah. future education that's what amber will does you know that's what you do here you record these you move it over to youtube and then people can watch it at any time mm -hmm. um i do believe too and i don't i want to get into the other things because we've spent so much we do know zoom quite a bit um i i do want to uh I do believe that there's a way, and I, I have done it before, and if you're not used to doing it, sometimes you forget how to do things. So we have all of our, all the people here on this Zoom call. If we just wanted to spotlight just two panelists or two people that are talking and, and, and have just their pictures up, there's a way to do that too, but um, that's all. There's a way. There's a way to do it. That's, that's my message to you. Um, Okay, so the next, oh, I don't want to share that. I wanted to, I want to present. So the next, um, the next uh, critter I'm going to, or thing I'm going to talk about is Pear Deck. And this is, um, Jen, I don't even think I need to really, sh yeah, okay. Uh, it, it's more for classrooms, but I, I, I do a lot of um, educator, educator trainings using uh, growing, our, our Growing Up Wild or Early Childhood um, curriculum. And so I used this platform as a way to make those, those um, uh, educator workshops more interactive because just me standing, just talk is just awful. No one wants to do that. This, it's just horrible. And so um, uh, Pear Deck is an add-on. So can everybody see my minimized screen here? Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm gonna Spotlight. Thank you. So um, add-ons are up here and you're in Google. And so these are the add-ons that I have and Pear Deck is here and then you can just open Pear Deck. Um, and um, how this works is, um, I wish, I don't know if I can figure out how to show you behind the scenes, but um, these slides right here, this slide, this slide, these slides right here are all done in Pear Deck. Um, and you'll have to watch some videos on how to do it. Um, or I can walk you through it and we can figure out how, how to, if, if you're interested in doing something like this. But when I hit click start this lesson, um, it's going to give me a, a link to send that I'm going to pop in, in the, um, the chat box and you open up a new tab and put that link in the new tab in your, the new tab. So we'll have the zoom, I'll be presenting in zoom, and then you'll also have your interactive uh, tab that you're going to, um, so instructor paste, I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see this. And it's gonna launch the presentation. And I have the link copied and now I need to put it in the chat, which is right here. And this is a free service to use, right, Jamie? Or do you guys have a subscription? So it's kind of free. There's definitely, you know, you don't get access to everything, but you have enough that you can, you can make some things happen. Um, so I have two students connected. You can see here, I have two students connected, right? So the chat, uh, go ahead and click on that link and it should take you. If you guys want to click the link in the chat. And if you, if it doesn't take you, you can uh, copy and paste it into a new tab. Awesome. How many people do we have on? 16, so 13, six is on, there is seven. Yeah, there we go. Doing it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start the class. This is, so what you're seeing in Zoom, it, it, on the Zoom screen is, is um, 
let me close that out here and move this over here. Um, and you have your tab and then where the zoom tab, where the, the tab with the zoom screen is, is, is like the, the presenter view. So we're going to start with um, this first slide. So everybody on your tab and your Pear Deck tab, you should see Jamie and Julia are rocking this presentation. So it is a draggable and you'll want to um, take that little blue dot and I can show you the responses in my uh, in the zoom. So if you want to see what like the zoom presentation looks like, you can click back to your zoom tab and then the interact you can click back to your interactive tab. So yes, we are rocking this presentation, Julia. They said so. Yeah. Okay, so that was just what that was like, like, that's just one kind of um, kind of slide that you can use in Pear Deck. And I have a couple, a couple, just another one here. This is these are these next slides are ones I used for growing up wild uh, teaching with the seasons. Um, so, uh, so you need to guess this track. So guess the track. Um, you can just it's like a little quiz. Um, and um, on the Zoom tab, um, you can I, it will show your responses. So everyone guess rabbit because we're all you know, we all know. So the next one I want you to is guess have a couple people guess wrong, not all of you. So <laughs> talk amongst yourselves. And, no, I'm just kidding. So we got a bird. Yeah. So everyone did some people. So if you can look in the Zoom the Zoom tab, you can see the raccoon track and then the bird it tells you how many people have um answered and how many and what see how so it's like kind of graphing a little bit a little bit of like science graphing situation um let's do another one guess this track y'all you could use that for survey methods too yeah right? and, like and if you want to know an answer to a certain question uh, and there's, that's exactly right, Julia. And there's lots of different, like you can do a poll in Zoom. You could use this um, a little bit more of the like grown up version is Nearpod. That's very similar to this. Um, but you do need a prescription to uh, a prescription. That's not it. That's not what I'm trying to say. A registration. You need to have a Subscri what subscription. Subscription. Thank you. I was like, what, what's the word I'm trying to say? A subscription. Access more to access more of that more of that stuff. Um, okay, so I think oh so now now I want you to um, here's a type one, so you can draw. But when um, I have found that when you type when you're you can, it's hard to draw, and like write write, but um, it, with this with this tool. So I always go down to the little T. You should have a little T for text, and then um, and then like text box what you have have to say. So type any two comments or uh, questions or comments you may have about Pear Deck. So and then uh, when you go into the Zoom tab, you can see how I can scroll through every single individual person's answers. Have you used it with both? I don't understand your both adults and kids. I have done both adults in, or actually yes I have done with a, um, it's harder to do with kids uh, in classrooms because so the question is is have I used Pear Deck with both adults and kids and in the classroom it's a little bit harder unless the students have um, a one-on-one -on -one. Um, a lot of a lot of classrooms don't have one-on-one -on -one. and so I'm just presenting myself in 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 just one one screen but if there's one-on-one -on -one, um, one -on -one, just a second one-on-one. -on -one. Um, Jamie, I noticed this is interesting. Yeah. It's a little contrasting than Jamboard because it seems that every individual participant has its own blank slate, which is interesting. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I got distracted. So I just, I just wanted to show you that. Um, so I'm going to stop this. I'm going to figure out how to, oh, there we go. So I just kind of wanted to show you, and you can save the session at the end. You can save the session, and um, then all the answers and all of the the questions are all together. I never really do that, but I can see how that would 
um, be beneficial for educators if they wanted, if there was like grading that needed to be done. Um, so that was Pear Deck. And there are other platforms that are very similar to Pear Deck. Um, and again, um, <clears throat> I, I recommend, you know, you could just do you Google Pear Deck and then start, you know, going down the rabbit hole of videos, you know, um, video tutorials. So <clears throat> the next one, I'm not going to go, um, you can all see Padlet, right? The green screen that says Padlet, is that what the screen I'm sharing? Thumbs up, Julia or Amber? Green? Okay, thanks. Um, the next one I'm going to show you is Padlet. <clears throat> so Padlet's like a, it's a, a cloud-based, uh, Collaborate. It's a cloud-based collaborative platform, and it's like. Let me just show you. You can add texts and document. I'm just going to show you. This is what I'm going to do. So this is a Padlet. It's just like a. It's like a canvas, right? So this is a Padlet that I I made, and uh, for a group of ten different people, ten different groups, and for a, a presentation I was giving to try to make it interactive. So each, you know, group one has all of the information in here that they're going to need to do the interactive activities. Um, so um, the this activity was, I had some questions where it's about the monarch migration. So um, when you click on this uh, journey north timeline questions, here's the journey north uh, timeline questions. And the first question is the date and location of the earliest monarch cited in northern Mexico. Cool. Okay, cool. So then you can go up to this journey north map, which is um, this one right here. And the journey north map is really cool. I did not make this. This is just some uh, online. And while you are, you can scroll through and you see these little dots right here. These are um, GPS um, tagged uh, areas um, that of sight, first sightings of uh, uh, monarch butterflies. Okay, so this is where the monarch butterflies overwinter, if you didn't know, and in this area. <clears throat> and these uh, uh, oil mill uh, fir forests in this area. And they will come off the mountains around March <clears throat> as the daylight day starts getting longer and they, they start migrating north, the ones that overwintered. So the first and this little tab right here, you move through and like, oh my gosh, you can really see how the monarchs are starting to migrate forward and that this is in April of this year. And then this is, this one right here is May of this year. But we want the first sighting, because of this question that we have right here, the date and location of the earliest monarch sighted in Northern Mexico. Okay, just come with me along, come with me. So. We're back in January, no monarchs, in northern Mexico. Oh, we have a monarch in northern Mexico. So here it is right here. You click on this and it tells you this information. So we just are going to copy this information and then we're going to take it over to Hopefully this isn't too complicated. I'm, I'm thinking it might be a little too complicated, but I'm just going to keep going with it. I apologize. I will say, I will say as you do it, I mean, I watched this workshop that you did and it was really fascinating and it seems complicated on that side. And I know you did a lot of prep on it, but just showing people the technology that's available, this it's, it was really cool to see people interacting in this way and like collaborating on basically doing an activity together like this, but Yes, it was it was an act. It was an activity. And so this is part of the Padlet. Okay, so the journey north thing was not was just a link that the that the participants went to that I put in the Padlet. This right here is is part is is I had I created this in the Padlet. So I, what we found I want I wanted the, the, the folks to um, to find the first monarch in northern Mexico and the date. And I wanted them then to put, I want them then, then to put it on this map, just to have, an inter, have it be an interactive present because it's an activity that we have for students in person that we do so that they can look and look at the monarch migration, but this is a way to do it interactive. And so you can search the place by name or you can drag, drag or drop right here. So I'm just gonna drag or drop it in like northern Mexico and and then you can um 
you know, type in all your things. So I just wanted to kind of show you that, but now I want you to do your own thing. So I'm going to pop one more link. I'm going to pop a link into the chat box and I want you to go and, and maybe then, maybe then it'll all come around and it'll so everything that I just incoherently babbled at you will come around and it'll all like solidify in your brain and it'll all make sense. I just have faith. Keep the faith, people. Keep the faith. Keep the faith in the Jamie. Okay. So in the chat, here's a link that's going to send you to a Padlet that I made for you. Hold on, hold on. Copy link to clipboard. Paste. Okay. So click that link. Go to that Padlet. And then that Padlet will look like, um, let's bring this back over here. For mine's, me. And mine said it opened up automatically in Internet Explorer. Sometimes that happens where it doesn't work there. So sometimes you copy and paste that link and put it in a Google Chrome or another format, FYI. And that's like, uh, those are, that's like a little, I, pay attention to what Amber just said there. Like sometimes, um, the, through this a couple of times you'll learn that like oh it just like it just like opened up in 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 windows but it doesn't work in windows you need to open it up in google chrome so copying and pasting it is the best way so sometimes there's just these little tips can everybody see um my the 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 united states that says share your favorite place we, in the us is on your end jamie i can see yeah. that journey north still okay thank you i mm -hmm. thought maybe that's what was happening this is a cool one though here we go. There I we like go. it because when you know we're doing maybe a BOW program or we're doing an adult program that we're reaching out to participants outside of Nebraska, yeah. or you can just have them pop in and say, okay, where's everybody from? And then you can get a visual as far as where all your participants are listening from too. So you, you know, that, that reminds me, you know, that reminds me some, some of the things we've done as we as people are entering a Zoom presentation, you know, we're kind of chit-chatting and waiting and we say, hey, pop, pop in the chat, you know, where you're coming from. Because we've done a lot of programs in the last year that we're actually getting people joining from all over the country, which is exciting. Right. Yeah. But Jamie, this is a really good idea to have it a visual as people are chatting and coming into the presentation instead of just in the chat. This is super cool. And so th that, I mean, the map was the, uh, was the, just one one thing that you can do within Padlet. So let me just show you really quick. And again, is, is um, do you know is Padlet um, free or do you only get so many? Or I do it? have a subscription. It's a ten dollar a year or ten dollar a month. Um, um, and I I will make a bunch of Padlets and then cancel my subscription. But the, and sometimes they take them away and sometimes they leave. Mm -hmm. You just have access you have more access to more more designs um right or prescribe because i i think it's a prescription and not a subscription that's okay <laughs> so uh let me just show you the different kinds of so uh here's a preview of i think maybe i need to stop i know we're coming to the end here but i just really want just to kind of show you how do i stop this okay um so here's the preview of um of uh, the wall. So this is how you can set this up like this, which I think is kind of confusing. Um, let's see, we have stream grid. Oh, timeline I thought was really cool, right? So you can put a timeline in and then people can drop um, like this, this, you know, you can have dates and then, um, you know, you could do like the message that Zoic air at, you could have a whole be a whole timeline and then and then have people drop in their pins and then they have to add in insert in images and um, it's a whole timeline thing and people are doing it, you know, in real time from, you know, different places um, where there's the map. Um, here's kind of like an, a, an organ the organizational chart. Um, here's a grid the grid one so you know you can it's a it's a it, i think this would work really good for add people <laughs> like you can put all your stuff in here and organize it in a way um so so i don't know so that i don't know anything, i don't know anything about add people or anything okay <laughs> i just a suggestion for add people to organize themselves this has been 
fabulous. Um, and I'm, I knew this was going to be the case, but I'm really excited that I, I even learned um, things from you today, both of you. Um, I want to say something really quick. What I'm going to do, um, I'm going to email everyone after this. And again, I'm going to ask for the evaluation. If you'd love to share your feedback, we'd love to hear it. But I'm also going to link all these fantastic tools and resources in that email. So everyone has a list. I even thought of some as well, um, like Menti. I don't know if you guys have used Menti. That's one I've seen in a meeting before. That's really mm -hmm. cool. But anyways, I will definitely compile those so everyone has that. Um, and I know it's 1.30, so I want to respect everyone's time. Thanks, Jerry. Um, but does anyone, um, I'm okay to be here a few minutes. Does anyone have any questions or any uh, feedback or any thoughts before we have to go? Yeah, I'll stick around for questions if somebody has questions or something. I was just going to say a little bit of comment about like yeah. even the pot podcasting. I mean, we can oh, yeah. hesitate if anybody wants to do that. Uh, uh, or reach out to us too. It's a little bit. Julia, I know I want to chat with you about that actually at some point. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Um, okay. Well, anyways, thank you so much, everybody. And I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. And we look forward to seeing you at the next Lunch and Learn. And Jamie and Julia, that was really great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Always fun. nice working with you ladies. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you all.